Okay, so the recording button is on. I'm going to press and, pause. And there's one attendee, so we know that. Okay, so I'm going to press pause. So good evening and welcome to New York ACP's advocacy training webinar. My name is Loretta Pinesi and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for the New York ACP chapter. And I am delighted to be here this evening with Dr. Kellen King, Chair of the chapter's Health and Public Policy Committee with Dr. Nandini Anandu, member of the Health and Public Policy Committee and with Dr. Heather Bennett, New York ACP's Executive Director. I do want to just make one housekeeping note before we dive right in. Um, today's a Zoom webinar and this particular webinar format provides both a chat and a Q&A feature. I would, however, like to inform and emphasize that if you have a question at the end of the webinar, please use the Q&A feature only. Your questions are important and we would like to avoid the risk of overlooking them in the chat feed. So with that being said, let's take a real quick look at our NYACP mission, which is dedicated to advancing the specialty of internal medicine in New York State through education, advocacy, and quality improvement. The mission of NYACP is to enhance the quality and effectiveness of healthcare by fostering excellence and professionalism in the practice of medicine. And so a little bit about the chapter's structure and organization. New York ACP is one statewide organization that includes a C3 and a C6 corporation. For the purposes of tonight's webinar, we will focus on New York ACP Services, Inc., which is a not-for-profit corporation that provides education and advocacy services, including lobbying. And within the C6 is where our Health and Public Policy Committee is housed. So let's take a little bit of a closer look at our Health and Public Policy Committee under our C6 Corporation. So we refer to it as our HPPC and it is chaired by Dr. Kellen King. It consists of 48 committee members. It meets in the spring and in the fall of each year. And we do conduct business uh, through email when necessary throughout the year. The committee schedules and plans the annual advocacy day. It drafts our annual legislative agenda, which ultimately gets approved by our council board. It addresses legislative priorities pertaining to internal medicine and primary care. It monitors legislative bills and other public health issues. And it also reviews and takes actions on any and all resolution, resolutions that come before the committee. So I'm going to pause right there and ask Dr. Bennett if she would assist in posting our question number one poll. And before you is the poll and we will definitely show you the results before moving on. Right. So we're just trying to gauge um, whether you know who your assembly member and New York State Senator are. Okay, we'll give it another second here. All right, so it looks like most of you have familiarity, which is wonderful. And for the person who doesn't, I hope by the end of this evening, we've uh, convinced you that establishing a relationship is a great idea. Okay, we'll have a couple more polls coming up. Loretta, that's the first one though. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, let's move on. So if you don't know who your local elected officials are, 
I'm going to share with you two resources of how you can find out. On your screen before you, you can utilize the two links at the lower bottom of the screen. And these web links will put you um, in a position to enter your address, your city, and your zip code. And you will then be able to um, find who your local legislators are. The second option is to go on to the NYACP website and under their Grassroots Action Center, there is a feature to also help you find what you're looking for. So the first step is to input your zip code. You're gonna click continue. It will then ask you for your address. You'll input that information and ultimately it will produce the results that you're looking for. This year, New York ACP's Virtual Advocacy Day will take place this coming Thursday on May 6th. And later this month on May 25th and 26th, ACP will be holding their Virtual Leadership Day. And I just wanna note that whether you're lobbying for your patients um, and or your profession at the state or federal level, the process is fairly similar and it's extremely important. So let's talk a little bit about lobbying goals. So if you have an issue or an interest in the advocacy process, our message to you is to get involved. And you could do that by creating and building relationships. So the first step might be to schedule a meeting. Um, yes, face-to-face -face is great, but the new format over the past year has been virtual. And we can tell you that that, that format does work very well. So consider scheduling a meeting with your local assembly, Senate, or congressional representative. Um, you can also consider attending local events when possible. And it's a great way to make an introduction or to have a conversation. And again, when I say attend, it could be face-to-face -face or it could be virtual. Also participating in the chapter's annual advocacy day or ACP's annual leadership day is a good way to get involved. And I like the last bullet, which is all of the above. So you might wanna consider that. You want to become an important and valuable resource to your elected officials. And why do you want to do that? Because you are the medical expert and you have the ability to influence change for better quality and healthcare delivery for all New Yorkers. And that little phrase, you are the medical expert, you will, that will be a resounding theme throughout this whole webinar. And I really want you to believe that. Um, at this point, I would like to share the microphone, so to speak, with Dr. Kellen King, who will also provide a few comments around this, these lobbying goals. I just wanted to um, put in a plug actually for our um, lobby or our, our lobby day coming up this Thursday. Um, because sometimes if you're new to advocacy, you're new to all of this, it can be daunting to just jump right in. You may not know what you're going to say, how to even get started with a conversation. So um, our organized lobby days are a great way to be um, to start the process because you're in a group setting you can spend your first couple of meetings just listening quietly, learning, um, and you'll find that it's a pretty steep learning curve. So this Thursday and also the National Lobby Day is coming up at the end of the month. Great, thank you, Kellen. So when we talk about lobbying and building relationships, um, you might ask yourself the question, where do you start? What do you do? I really don't know. So here with us this evening, I'm privileged to introduce, introduce Dr. Nandini Anandu. Dr. Anandu is a hospitalist at Northern Westchester Hospital in Mount Kisco, and she's a member of the chapter's health and public policy and well-being committees. In addition, she 
serves as New York ACP's current Hudson Valley South District President. And she has personal experience about building legislator relationships. And we've asked her to join us this evening to give you and to share with you her personal story. So let's hear from, listen to, and learn from Dr. Anandu. So Dr. Anandu, I'm going to turn the microphone over to you now. Thanks, Loretta. And thanks to Heather and Dr. King as well. And thanks to all our attendees for coming tonight. My desire to become actively involved with advocacy, especially with help in public policy, started when I was a member of NYACP's council as counselor for my district. At one of the council board meetings, we were discussing Laverne's Law, which at the time was a bill and was in the process of getting passed. Laverne's Law extended the statute of limitations from two and a half years to seven years for failure to diagnose cancer. NYACP noted the inconsistent interpretations of the bill language and helped to ensure that it would only apply to failure to diagnose cancer and not more broadly. This is something that had direct impact on my practice and made me realize the importance of getting involved. My interest to become more active in my community largely stemmed from the change in the political climate that occurred in 2016. I wanted to do more and really didn't know how to start locally. I was at a Little League game one day for my son and met another mom who told me about a local advocacy group, which I joined. We did postcard writing to encourage voter registration and participation in local elections. At the same time, I expressed interest in getting involved locally to some parents at my son's school. They introduced me to some local nonprofits and helped me to become involved with those organizations. I started attending the fundraising events for these local nonprofits. It's at these events that I met the people who work directly with my elected officials. I also attended local fundraising events for my Senator and Assemblywoman. Many of these events were hosted by someone in my neighborhood. And that's how I met my local leaders, their staff, and started to form relationships. Through these connections, I helped our chapter get an appointment with Senator Biaggi, my local senator, on lobby day. We also met individually with my senator and assemblywoman on a different day. They are both members of the health committee. This one-on-one -on -one meeting allowed NYACP to make introductions and discuss our concerns. Even if your local elected official isn't on the health committee, they will still be voting on anything that comes out of that committee. Our relationship is important to help our legislator become familiar with the bills and their impact. And I must say, it's been such a rewarding experience to get to know my local officials and being involved with the HPP committee for NYACP. Thanks. Thank you so much for sharing. That was a great story. We appreciate all that you do for the chapter. And now I'm going to call on Dr. Bennett to help us with poll question number two. Okay, coming up. Number two. Okay, so for this one, um, just kind of doing a survey of where you think health policy has an impact on issues that impact uh, medicine. So uh, you might need to scroll down. I can see my whole one here. I, I think in a practice session earlier today, you might need to scroll down a little. But if you want to check off all of the items um, you believe are, are New York legislative issues that um, impact upon the practice. Okay, I'll give it another minute or so. Well, not minute, a couple of seconds longer. Okay, and I'll end the polling and share the results. So in fact, the legislature has had bills relating to each of these items. So it um, demonstrates a little bit of the variety of the kinds of things that you'll find when you come to Albany. Um, and this is also a good way to show that no matter what you're interested in, there is a bill for you that we can use your help on. Great. OK, 
Okay, Loretta, thanks. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, let's move on. Okay, so now let's talk about the three particular stages of a legislative meeting. There's the before the meeting, there's during the meeting, and there's after the meeting. So before the meeting, we want to select a date, a time, and a format. Format being virtual at this particular time, but maybe in, in, in person sometime in the not too distant future. And then also scheduling legislative um, appointments. And we can do that by either calling or emailing. And sometimes it does require both. So if for some reason the email for the scheduling person is not available on the website, it would just be a quick call to um, indicate you're looking for the email address of the person who assists the senator or the assembly member with scheduling. They are more than happy to provide that information. And you can then um, put your email together or if they're willing to accept the details right when you call, you'll want to identify yourself and you would you should indicate whether you are a constituent um, in that particular district. Often, if you are a constituent, you're more likely to get a an appointment a little bit sooner or um, it's it's helpful, trust us. Um, also, you want to include the purpose of your meeting request and also indicate the issue that you plan to discuss. And then who will be attending um, if it's someone in addition to yourself. You wanna be organized, um, select no more than two or three priority issues for discussion. One issue is absolutely fine, but I again, I would not suggest it be more than two or three. You should plan for an appointment time of approximately 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes it might be a little less and anything more, consider it a bonus. We ask that you know the issue, that you develop talking points and put together some background materials. Also prepare to leave, prepare some leave behind materials, including your contact information. In the past, when we met face to face, a simple business card was great, but perhaps some um, additional contact information um, might be requested as well. Also, what is your ask? Know what you want before you go into the meeting. And if you're setting up a meeting for a group of physicians, then you may want to consider doing a briefing in advance and perhaps appointing a group leader for um, each appointment you have scheduled. Also, you want to prepare yourself in advance. So what does that mean? It means you need to do your homework. One of the ways of doing your homework can be to review your assembly member or your senator's um, bio. Look for commonalities. Sometimes that can be the icebreaker when you start your meeting in terms of conversation. You'll also want to take a look at the geographic and demographic information. You'll want to take a look to see what committees that particular legislator serves on either in the assembly or in the Senate. And also um, you'll want to see whether that particular legislator um, has sponsored any bills or is co-sponsoring any bills, especially those that you might be interested in discussing. Very, very helpful. If meeting independently, consider consulting with New York ACP and or national in advance of your meeting. During the meeting, you will want to briefly introduce yourself, where you're, uh, indicate where you're from, describe your practice or your job, your patients, and any other information you'd like to share. If, the, if you're meeting as a member of ACP or the chapter, briefly share our mission and goals. Extend any possible thank yous for bill support or bill passage. 
present any issues or present your issues. And remember to be succinct and you want to use your own words. Be confident and remember you are the expert. You'll want to make the issues relatable. Provide real life situations that demonstrate the problem that you're describing. You can use personal examples to connect the topics to the constituents and the district. Share stories which make your issue memorable and give it credibility. I don't need to tell this group that this particular next bullet, but be courteous and polite, but firm with your requests. While rather informal, it's still a business meeting. Also, listen to his or her perspective, but present your views. Provide leave behind materials at the end of the meeting. And that's from personal experience. And I think everyone that's been involved in advocacy can remember an instance where um, you'll hand your materials, you'll leave behind packets, and they're flipping through the packets um, while you're trying to speak to them. It's a little distracting and you want to have their full undivided attention when you talk. Make the ask, be clear, say thank you, exchange contact information, and take a picture. And yes, you can do that in the virtual format as well. We've done that in the past, and again, it works very well. At this point, I'm going to pause once again and ask Dr. Kellen King to jump in with some other important comments that I know she yeah. wanted to share. Thank you, Loretta. I think all of those are really um, well said, and I just wanted to emphasize that um, oftentimes the legislators will jump in and then try to steer the conversation in the direction that they want it to go. So it's really important to have the confidence to be nice about it, but to bring them back to the issue at hand. Um, and that's part of our job is to keep them on task. So thank you. Great, thanks, Dr. King. After the meeting, usually within two weeks of the meeting, um, you should send a quick thank you to recap the meeting highlights, any legislative commitments that were made, and also to let them know that you are a resource and that you are available for any future healthcare related issues. And also very important, don't be afraid to follow up with staff because building a relationship with staff members can be equally as important. And we have also learned that from experience. So again, most staff members prefer email. Um, again, when you do the thank yous, tie up loose ends from the meeting, um, answer any questions that they may have asked, and also uh, reinforce that you are a, a valuable resource for them and you'd be happy to hear from them. Um, this, a few of these items may be a little bit repetitive, but I felt important to just mention a few um, tips on effective advocacy. Again, you're the most valuable resource on health-related issues. That's first and foremost. Always keep that in mind. So you'll want to check with a, a New York ACP in advance on any policies and or positions because that information could be helpful for a meeting. Leave behind materials should include extensive information to support the issues and the ask. On subject matter, be accurate, brief, and or add something new. You will enhance your effectiveness with a friendly exchange of ideas. Always remember, your own personal experience as a physician is your most effective advocacy tool and stories are very good to share. Include medical students and residents in your legislative meetings if possible. We have learned that they are always called upon when we've met um, with our legislators in the past and they were part of our advocacy group. Legislators love to hear from the upcoming and future physicians um, in our state. So again, very important. If there is agreement 
get that legislator's commitment to take specific action. If you don't know the answer to a question or additional information on a particular subject matter is requested, offer to obtain that information and follow up with them. There is nothing wrong with that. It's better to provide them with accurate information than misinformation. And if informed at the last minute that your meeting is going to take place with a leg legislative aid, graciously accept that. Do not cancel the meeting because staff members are often instrumental in shaping a legislative member's view and they can be a really good contact. So what do we want to avoid in a meeting? And again, some of this is common sense, but I, I included it regardless. So some of the things to avo avoid. Leaving your senator or assembly member or their staff members guessing about what you're asking them to do is not a good idea. Therefore, you need to be clear, specific, and don't forget to make the ask. Reading directly from the leave behind document or from a script or handing the leave behind materials to the staff at the beginning of the meeting is not advised. Being ill prepared either on the topic matter or when speaking with your lawmaker is not advisable either. We don't want to mention financial support in a campaign during any of our meetings, and we do not want to directly quote staff or the lawmaker on any social media posts. We want to avoid distractions during the meeting, and that might include checking your mobile device, texting, sending emails, or just constantly looking at your phone. It's, a, it's really advisable to put your phone on mute. And also looking or acting overly disappointed if you're getting any pushback um, to any of the conversation that's taking place. Um, it's understandable, but we want to hide that disappointment because we always want to remain professional and respectful. Just like our physician members, our legislators can be very busy too. They're responsible for attending committee meetings, um, attending assembly and Senate session meetings, voting on bills, preparing in advance of voting on certain bills. They're meeting with their constituents and other groups. Um, they review constituent mail, press clips, and other various reports. And they too, like physicians, can work long into the night. Um, they do have receptions and they do attend fundraising events. And although in the past it's been more face-to-face, -face, these types of events can be virtual now as well. So they are busy and we certainly understand their schedules. So we wanna keep that in mind. So let's talk a little bit about how we can um, look at engaging ourselves in some advocacy opportunities. So we suggest that you um, schedule periodic meetings with your local Assembly Senate congressional representatives. It's a great way to build relationships and it also enhances the likelihood of being remembered. So stay in front of them and stay up to date and keep them up to date on important healthcare issues. We certainly can invite them to participate in a chapter regional or district event. And you and any of our physicians um, have in the past or can consider doing in the future, inviting them for on-site visits to your office, your hospital, or your clinic. That way you can provide examples of day-to-day -day concerns of patient care delivery, and you can expose them to the practice issues that you've either met with them, talked to them about, or areas that they're showing further interest in um, working with you on. And then also participating in local town hall meetings, that's another great way to um, get involved and to um, interact. So now we're gonna pause again, and I'm gonna ask Dr. Bennett to assist with our polling question number three, which will be the last polling question for this evening. Great. 
So here's just, we're gonna take stock a little bit um, about what NYACP can do to support you in your efforts to meet with legislators. So if you wanna give us some feedback on that, that would be wonderful. Love to, and if you have anything specific, I tried to put a word cloud up, but we'll take it in chat, which I'll capture as well. Okay, I'm gonna end the polling and share the results. So this is really great. Um, I would love to team people up together to me and we can team you up not only with um, another NYACP member, but if you're interested, we can team you up with um, a, a staff person also at NYACP myself or Loretta as well. Um, that's really, this is really great feedback for us that some of you would be interested in doing that. We have resources at our office. And um, like, like for example, coming up on Thursday, we are doing our, our lobby day. We have prepared talking points on um, nurse practitioner scope of practice, pharmacy scope of practice. The legislature this year in the budget had a proposal to allow pharmacists to order administer and then perform laboratory tests. <laughs> um, so there, there are a lot of things going on right now that we're monitoring and preparing documents for. So you can easily review them, take them with you. So we can give you a package, um, which will hopefully make your life easy. Um, and then we're also um, lobbying on telehealth parity uh, for the telephone and video visits um, parity with uh, in the payment systems. So. We have a lot of materials, happy to share them. And if you have a meeting that's not part of our lobby day, we'll be happy to share what the hot button issues are. We're tracking and monitoring about 500 bills actively and watching what goes through committees. So um, we are here as a resource anytime that you need to reach us. Just go to the website and all of our contact information is there. And back to you, Loretta. Okay, great. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Okay, um, a couple more bullet points on other opportunities for engagement in advocacy. Um, you, when you meet with your uh, elected officials, you may want to ask them if they have a mailing list that they can add you to specifically for healthcare or healthcare related issues or any other issues that you may have an interest in. Also, you might consider volunteering to serve on a physician roundtable, an advisory committee, or some other healthcare meeting that may happen to get mentioned during your appointment. And if nothing like that exists, feel free to suggest that one be initiated. And we also would encourage all of our NYACP members to respond to the chapter's call to action when those emails are sent out. Um, this Wednesday, there will be a morning email sent to all of our physician members. It is a member call to action through the chapter's Legislative Action Center. The topic will be on pay parity for telehealth services. And all's, the only thing a member has to do is click on the link that's in that email. It will take them to where they input and retrieve their um, local representatives, their assembly person, and their senator. And we have also prepared a letter, um, a sample letter that can be used as is, or it can be personalized. So please, um, on Wednesday morning, when you see that email come through, please take a moment to respond. And also, if interested in federal advocacy, ACP National has a similar legislative action center. And speaking about ACP and getting involved at the federal level, um, we encourage you to join AIM. AIM is the acronym for Advocates for Internal Medicine Network. It would be an opportunity for you to join over 15,000 colleagues who are interested in participating in federal advocacy. And it's 
it's an avenue to help members engage with their federal lawmakers on policies that are important to ACP and internal medicine. So there's a link at the bottom of the screen um, that can be used for more information. It's also information is also posted on ACP's website. And if you prefer to reach out to me directly, I'm happy to put you in touch with more information and how to join AIM. And now I would like to ask our HPP chair, Dr. Kellen King, to talk for a, just a few minutes uh, from a personal perspective about physician advocacy and why it's important and rewarding. And um, we are just so delighted um, to have Dr. King share her story with us. So again, I'm going to virtually hand off the microphone to Dr. King. Thank you, Loretta. Um, and thank you everyone for attending this webinar. Uh, I first learned about the role that NYACP's Health and Public Policy Committee plays during my first NYACP leadership conference. At the time, I was looking for a way to not only become more involved with ACP, but to find an activity that would help lead to more sustainability in my daily practice of medicine. I have always been interested in government and was intrigued to see how I could use my clinical experience to help bring forward and maybe even begin to solve some of the issues I'm so passionate about in clinical medicine. Prior to this, I had never participated much in local government or policymaking, and I can still remember being incredibly daunted prior to my first lobby day in Albany with NYACP. I was full of questions that day. Would I know what to say? Why would the legislators want to listen to me? Would they respect and be interested in what I was arguing for? As it turns out, my fears were unfounded. I found out that day that we, as physicians, can play a huge role in bringing forward key issues and also in providing ideas for solutions. Our legislators view us as leaders in our communities and want us to speak with them. Because stories are more powerful than words, I'd like to leave you with a brief example of how much influence we can have. It was my partner Leslie Algase's first lobby day a few years ago. We had a meeting with the then chair of the Senate Health Committee, Senator Hannon. At that meeting, it became clear that he had no idea about the difference between what a general internist does, what a specialist does, and what a geriatrician does in clinical practice. Leslie eloquently taught him about the key differences, but our meeting was not the end of this topic. Senator Hannon reached out immediately the next day to Leslie following the meeting to learn more about this. And that conversation ultimately led to a white paper published by NYC, NYACP on the role that geriatricians play in medicine that continues to be a valuable resource for our legislatures today. With this, I invite you all to become more active in voicing your opinions regarding current health policy to your local legislators, whether it be through one of our call to actions by a quick story at a community meeting, or more formally by participating with us at our virtual lobby day in May. Thank you so much for attending. Thank you, Dr. King. So this is our last um, next to last slide. And Heather and I wanted to thank both Dr. King and Dr. Anandu for their service to the chapter their dedication to the chapter, their involvement, and their participation in our webinar tonight. And we also wanted to thank all of our attendees um, who joined us this evening um, to participate in the, in the webinar. For those participants, if you are interested in joining us on Thursday, May 6th for our Advocacy Day, please feel free to reach out to me directly. And we do want you to also know that you do have two New York ACP staff members who are registered New York State lobbyists, one being myself and the other being Dr. Heather Bennett. And again, thank you to everyone. And now we're on to the question and answer portion of our webinar. I'm going to stop sharing the screen and please type in your questions in the Q&A box and we will be happy to respond to your questions. We do have one that came in um, just 
prior to the meeting. A member was wondering how often you have to meet with a legislator in order to have an impact. Yeah, and Dr. Anandu or Dr. King, do you have a sense on like the, the cadence that would be most effective? You mean to have an impact in what we're presenting? Right, or to, to develop a relationship with a legislator. Yeah, that's um, a great question. I'm not sure if I can uh, have the answer to that. It took me a while to develop my relationship though. It wasn't just one event that I met them um, before they really got to know who I was. Um, it did take some effort. That's great. We have one up. Uh, a participant, Dr. Dobsavage has her hand up. So Dr. Dobsavage, I'm going to unmute you. Oh, and just as a heads up, everybody, it also brings you in on the video. So Dr. Dobsavage, if you wanna um, unmute, you can ask your question. Yes, um, there I'm, I think I'm unmuted. Yeah. Uh, unmute, am I unmuted? You are. You can hear me. So um, anyway, I have arranged one meeting with a legislative aid for uh, June. And my understanding of what happens on Thursday is that we meet like from eight to nine and then um, there's got, there's a couple of scheduled things, right? That and is correct. And then we go, yeah. And then I thought, you know, I could do like Zoom meeting in the afternoon. And then there's the sort of after uh, assessment at around 5.30 on Thursday. Is that right? Yes, in fact, um, tomorrow, um, Loretta can share the schedule with you with all of the links for each of the appointments that you're part of. Okay, okay, yep. great. Yeah. Wonderful, thanks. Yeah, we're, we're looking forward to, to seeing and you. And then I'm, I'm trying to, you know, I'll probably call Robert Jackson's office tomorrow. I did send an email, but no response so far. Okay, well, if we can help you, uh, send us an email and we'll see if we can follow up on your behalf as well. Okay, great, thanks. All right, thank you. And I see Dr. Um, Simon has his hand up, so I will bring you in. All right, can you hear me? We can, welcome. Hey, Heather, hey, Loretta, <laughs> hey, Kelly. Hello. Oh, oh let's do that again. Am I unmuted now again? You are. You yes. are. Go right ahead. That was weird. I was unmuted and then muted and then unmuted. Sorry about that. Well, hi, everybody. <laughs> um, Loretta, I wanted to ask you, I, I know that you have prepared some materials on some of the issues. Um, I, I haven't admittedly actually seen those <laughs> materials yet, but I was really intrigued by what you were saying about the ask. <laughs> and I was wondering if, it, does it get that specific as to this is the ask that we're kind of recommending from NYACP? Um, and this is what we'd like you to kind of ask for, or emphasize? Yes, exactly. Um, with our talking points that are in the finalizing stages <laughs> um, that will be shared with you. Um, there is a specific ask, and it can be as simple as we would like your support in voting in favor of Assembly Bill X, uh, 123 or Senate Bill 456. Um, or it could be in the opposite direction. Um, we'd like to ask that you reconsider and oppose this particular piece of legislation because as a physician in your community, I see this bill as being negative upon patient care, access to care. It could be for whatever reason you believe the bill should be opposed um, based upon what its intent is supposed to accomplish. So it can be an easy ask, support the bill, oppose the bill, period. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. You're very welcome. <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they'd like to ask? I think I've got to everybody who had a hand up. 
Okay, I think we're good then, Loretta. Okay, great. So again, if there's any questions that come to mind, um, even after tonight's webinar, please feel free to reach out to me directly or to Heather. We're more than happy to provide you with more information and any other tips on advocating um, on behalf of your profession, on behalf of your patients. And again, thank you all very much for joining us and to our HPP chair and our special guest this evening, Dr. Anandu. Thank you so much. Heather, thanks. Thanks for the great questions and wishing everyone a great evening. And Loretta, can I preview? Everybody listen to the podcast tomorrow. Our wonderful advocacy interns are going to come to you in real life. Um, the Good. podcast tomorrow being distributed. So the link's going to be on its way. Great. And Thanks. don't forget to participate in our call to action on Wednesday. And we hope to see you on Thursday. Right. Okay. Take care. Have Thanks a good everybody. night, everyone. Thank you, you so too. much. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.